I think it's appropriate for the panel's first hearing. We have a senior member of the Defense Acquisition System and GAO's senior uh, acquisition management professional sitting side by side. It's not that often that members of this committee get a chance to talk to the Department of Defense and GAO at the same time. Thank you, gentlemen, for making this possible and agreeing at uh, such an early hour. <clears throat> the first question this panel identified as part of the work plan was whether there is a method to reasonably measure the ability of the defense acquisition system to deliver the goods and services needed by the warfighter and to do so in a timely fashion and to do so at a fair price to the taxpayer. Today's hearing will likely not answer the larger philosophical question about how one should measure value in defense acquisition, but it is an important first step for us to, stand, for us to understand how DOD and GO, GAO currently assess performance in one segment of defense acquisition, the major weapons system programs that we are the focus of assessment, uh, G, GAO's assessment released this week. <clears throat> These programs receive, uh, receive a great deal of scrutiny by Congress and by the media for good reason. GAO's report reveals that nearly 70 percent of DOD's 96 largest weapon programs were over budget, 296 billion, or 42 percent. This is simply unacceptable. Everyone understands why we cannot continue to tolerate these cost increases. There is little more to be said on that subject. But what we don't hear as much about is that the GAO had encouraging words to say about the steps the Pentagon has taken to improve acquisition uh, outcomes, including early stage systems engineering, prototyping, uh, measurable yearly plans, increasing accountability, and minimizing requirements creep. The report states these changes are consistent with a knowledge-based approach to weapons development that we have recommended in our work. If implemented, these changes can help programs to reduce risk with knowledge, thereby increasing the chances of developing weapon systems within cost, scheduled targets, uh, while uh, meeting user needs. These are encouraging signs, but to, uh, improve, but, but to improve outcomes on the whole, DOD must ensure that these policy changes are consistently implemented and reflected in decisions on individual programs. I hope we hear more today about these positive improvements that DOD is making and what more needs to be done. Of course, we are likely to learn that much of what DOD does to measure performance is already statutorily required. I also hope our witnesses feel free to share their views on laws and regulations that are not assisting in their efforts to obtain the best value and capability for our warfighters. There is a balance to be struck between setting high expectations and over-regulating the system. With that, I conclude and again thank my fellow members and Mr. Chairman. I look forward to witnesses' testimony.